Have you ever built a supercapacitor that suffered from really high and unusual self-discharge? If so, this video will hopefully solve your problems. So if you came to this video looking for a method to reduce self-discharge, the kind of self-discharge that happens in days or weeks, well, uh, I have nothing to give that will help you. This video is meant to help people whose supercapacitors self-discharge in a matter of minutes. So, um, I've always had this problem and I finally figured out uh, the solution to my problems. However, however, there are there probably are many reasons for why su supercapacitors um, self-discharge unusually, not the usual way. The usual way is the um, the solvent or the dielectric layer breaking down uh, over time. But this video will cover um, the ways that can cause really fast self-discharge. So I'll go over many of the reasons and methods to um, troubleshoot. So um, the first and probably most obvious cause of unusually high self-discharge in your supercapacitor is a probably direct short circuit. So I've never had this problem, but um, it might happen to some of you. I'm not sure. So basically what happens is, well, okay, first this diagram. This is your positive charge collector, negative charge collector. There's gonna be electro material I don't draw on the charge collector. This is your separator. So direct short circuit is when um, the plates are connected somehow electrically through a short circuit and that causes your charge to just neutralize each other. So one reason this might happen is maybe your electro material particles are just too large and they puncture the separator and connect. Or uh, the binder isn't very good and it floats off and connects, though I think this is very unlikely. And the final um, reason is um, your separator isn't insulating enough and the electricity is conducted through the separator. I also find this unlikely. Even regular paper is a good separator. So some fixes is to um, make your electromaterial particle size smaller, use a good binder, and use a good separator, but really you, regular paper will work. And um, you don't really need a good binder because I'm not sure this, this cause is very likely. So that's how you fix direct short circuit. Another reason why your supercapacitor might be self-discharging really fast is you might be overcharging it. So what happens when you overcharge it is that uh, if you charge, well, okay, first of all, the the voltage, the overcharging voltage depends on your um, type of electrolyte you're using. For aqueous electrolytes, that is um, electrolytes using water as a solvent, um, the, the overcharging voltage is 1.23 volts because that's when water um, decomposes to form hydrogen and oxygen. So what happens uh, is very messy. I'm not even going to describe it, describe the process because that doesn't have to do with anything. Not important. So um, what happens is uh, basically the water is split into oxygen and hydrogen and that process uses up the charges on the plates. So that just decreases the voltage and all that energy stored on the plates goes into the new bonds in the hydrogen and oxygen. So uh, the simple fix is just to not charge it over 1.23 volts for water electrolytes. A third reason why unusually high self-discharge might be happening is something called charged redistribution. Now I'm still not really sure about the definition of this, so if I'm wrong just correct me in the comments. So what I think charged redistribution is, is um, well, first of all, the diagram. This is just one electrode. Here's your electro material, forms pores. So, what I think it is is when you charge, there's uh, the ions that are attracted towards your plate. Um, they form uneven areas. So this might have this area might have less ions than here, and so 
the ions build up in the more accessible areas of the pores, and they f form large groups. And then, if they're dense enough, um, they overcome the force of attraction by the positive charges on the um, plate. So what happens is they repel against each other more strongly than they are attracted to the plate, and they f dissipate outwards. Some might go uh, deeper into the pores, but most will go out into the electrolyte solution. And so that charge is just lost. And so the fix to this is to charge the supercapacitor for longer periods, so they're um, grouped more evenly. And also, um, to well, f uh, directly after you've made your supercapacitor, this could happen a lot because the electrolyte hasn't completely wetted the, your electrode yet. So another solution, if you've just made your supercapacitor, is just to let it um, age for a while, maybe three days, and then this problem should be gone. Um, the last mechanism for unusually high self-discharge I'm just going to discuss is corrosion. Now, um, I've never heard of anybody describe this as a reason, so if I'm wrong, just correct me. But I'm pretty sure I'm right because this is how I fix my supercapacitors. So, um, if you're using a metal foil, such as aluminum, as a uh, current collector, and your electro material is a different um, material, like carbon, and some areas of your aluminum are exposed to electrolyte, or the electrolyte seeps through your carbon, then this will form a, a basically a battery, and that will corrode the aluminum. And this probably will also happen if you don't even use electromaterial, you just use, you just directly use aluminum foil. So corro corrosion will happen, and lots of complicated stuff will uh, occur, and all that will probably mess up your charges that are um, stored here. So either cancel out those those charges, or augment them. But if it's the charges are augmented, it's the total uh, charge stored by the capacitor is still reduced by the other electrode, because if that the charge on the other electro the other electrode is diminished, then the charge on the entire capacitor is diminished. So mm, there are many ways to fix this. You could use some sort of non-corrosive current collector, but that's a bit, a bit expensive. Or you can make sure there's no exposed areas on the current co collector. But if your supercapacitor already has exposed areas, then <clears throat> um, you have to use another solution. It's pretty simple. Basically, all this time I've been testing my supercapacitors right after they've been made. And this fix is similar to the charge redistribution fix. You just let it sit for a while. And eventually what I think happens is an, a thick oxide layer forms on the exposed area of the aluminum. And that protects it from farther corrosion. So I'm going to show you an example. This is a supercapacitor I recently made with the electrodes from the um, How to Make Supercapacitor Electrodes video. Oh, you're right. I know about that. Um, the ratio of electromaterial to binder by volume should be uh, 5 to 1, so of 5 parts binder, no, sorry, 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 5 parts electromaterial to 1 part binder, so that will create a firmer electrode. But anyways, back to this. So, at first, this had problems, it self-discharged really quickly like some of my other supercapacitors, like the graphite one. You can see that video. See how quickly it's self-discharged. So after just one day, and lots of charging, because I think charging will improve it, it's um, improved a lot. So I'll charge it up with battery and show you what I get afterwards. And also, I'll be charging it for about five minutes, just so you know. So here, I've been charging the supercapacitor with the battery and I've connected it with wires and weighted it down with uh, wooden blocks I guess. So the battery um, at max is 1.5 volts and you do not want to charge a 
aqueous electrolyte supercapacitor, that is, um, the electrolyte is water, you shouldn't charge those with uh, 1.5 volts. But the battery I've used uh, is uh, pretty old, and its voltage has gone down. So I'll try to show you. Let's put the camera here. And I'll try to show you. And it's interesting. The voltage of the battery has dropped down to half a volt. And it was actually at one volt a minute a minute ago. So that's weird. Maybe it's all gone into the super capacitor. That would be cool. So I'll disconnect it and show you the charge of the super capacitor and how it doesn't self discharge. So here's the super capacitor, my multimeter, and try to show you the voltage. So this is charged to half a volt, and it's not decreasing. And yeah, I fixed it. So all I need, all I really did was um continuously, continuously charge and discharge it, which I guess helped. The aluminum oxide, so yeah, it, it improves its charging. And also, I've let it sit for a day. After three days, it should be even better. So now I'll just summarize everything I've talked about in this video. Uh, so for unusually high self-discharge, that is in a matter of minutes. Here are some reasons. One is a direct short circuit. Uh, to fix that, you could use smaller electromaterial particles good binder, and also a good separator, but regular paper works. Another uh, cause might be um, overcharging, which will cause uh, hydrogen and oxygen to form out of the water, so all the charge goes into breaking up the water. So a simple fix is just don't overcharge it over, over 1.23 volts. Another cause is charge redistribution, which is when you have uh, large concentrations of ions spread out unevenly, and this causes the ions to fly away. <laughs> a simple fix is to let your supercapacitor sit for a while, for three days or so, and that will help the electrolyte, um, that will let the electrolyte wet the surface of the, um, all the por not just the surface, but also the pores of the electromaterial better. And you could also charge for longer periods to reduce charge redistribution. And the other reason is corrosion. So you could either cover up your charge collector completely, use a unreactive charge collector, but those are expensive, or you can uh, just let it sit for a while and slowly an oxide layer will form. At least on aluminum, on iron probably it will just flake off like rust. So you could just use aluminum foil. Uh, also, repeated charge, charging and discharging helps the oxide layer form too. So, um, that's all the causes and troubleshooting methods I've discussed. And thank you for watching, and I hope this video will help you.